Welcome to this week's Who the Folk podcast. I'm Lonnie Goldsmith, the editor of TC Jew Folk. This week, we conclude the Returning to Webster series, which you can read in its entirety on tcjewfolk.com, by talking to Jackie Kalin, Herzl Camp's Staff, Life, and Development Coordinator. We talk about her journey back to camp, the purpose of creating the Staff Advisory Committee, and how her career playing and coaching basketball connects to her work with the summer staff on this week's Who the Folk podcast. Jackie Kalin, welcome to this week's Who the Folk podcast. Thank you, Lonnie. Happy to be here. I am so excited to get to talk to you. This is the final part of the Returning to Webster series. Jackie is the Staff Life and Development Coordinator, Director, Coordinator, oh. which... Staff Life and Development Coordinator is my official Co- title. Okay, perfect. At Herzl Camp. Um, and it is great to talk to you. I had so much fun talking to you for the series um, the piece on staffing, hopefully you all have read uh, it dropped on Friday or you saw it in the newsletter uh, on Sunday. It's um, it, it, it was such a fun series to get to write and get to talk to all of the camp people. So I guess for starters, you are one of the newer of the Herzl staff. How did you get to camp? What brought you to, to sort of staff world at Herzl? Great question. Um, The simplest answer, honestly, is Drea Lear. So um, Drea was actually my Kadima counselor um, when I was a camper. And uh, my my last session as a camper was Biachad, and she was my Biachad program director. So she was somebody that I was very close with as a camper. And then I actually never got uh, came back on staff because of playing basketball. And I was away from camp after my Biachad summer for about 15 years and never actually would have guessed that I was going to end up uh, back at Herzl, let alone living permanently now in, in Webster. Um, but really what brought me back was around the time that I left college basketball coaching. Um, you know, Drea and I had stayed in touch, but, you know, we might have gone a year or two without talking, maybe, you know, sent a message once a year here and there. Um, but it was like, one of those just universe coming together things where I had gotten out of coaching, didn't really know what I wanted to do next, was just kind of doing a lot of side jobs. And she had just kind of randomly reached out and asked if I'd be interested in coming and running, you know, a short little basketball clinic up at Herzl. Um, And I ended up uh, coming for the summer that summer, rather than just doing the clinic, I was like, well, hey, yeah, that sounds great. And I can stay all summer if you'd like. <laughs> and I ended <laughs> up, I ended up uh, uh, coming back for the t- 2018 summer. Um, and that's kind of how I got back involved with Herzl. And then, okay. you know, fast forward, it ended up turning into this year round position working with staff. So Okay, so you mentioned the basketball, and I guess, you you know, you brought it up, we may as well, I mean, you stepped on a lot of questions that I had lined up in my head (laughs) with with your answer, and that's totally fine. But, you know, you, so you finished your your last summer at Herzl, Biyachad is the summer before 10th grade, you went on to be one of the more accomplished college basketball players in the history of University of Northern Iowa. Did you... When you were that Biachad camper, that Kadima camper, did you know, because I, I mean, you talk to a lot of people, they sort of have a sense of where they are athletically. Did you know at that point that that this could be a thing? Uh, no, definitely not. I At that point in time, I knew that I wanted to continue after high school and playing college basketball. Um, I do remember going into my 10th grade year having to make a decision about like playing AAU basketball or some all summer versus taking that at the time it was a four week session and mm-hmm. going to camp. And I do remember being like, Oh, I'm going to camp <laughs> like that. That is no question. Um, but I, at that point I knew I wanted to play. I, I really was somebody who like was kind of a late bloomer when it came to uh, basketball. And one of the things I always remembered from my high school coach that he said, 
um, to my future coaches at UNI when I graduated high school was this is somebody who is just going to continue getting better. You know, she's got a great work, work ethic and her best basketball is yet to come. So I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what was coming. Um, I just kept working hard and, and the rest came about. So you're very much a basketball lifer then you played, you played professionally overseas. Uh, you, 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 you got into coaching I guess what happened that you left coaching? I mean, obviously we were th- as, as a Herzl camp fan, you know, part of a Herzl camp family, we're thrilled that you're at camp, but, <laughs> but, but was there, sure. was there something that sort of flipped for you that like, maybe I've, you know, sort of run out my, run my, run my race in, in basketball? Yeah, I think, um, honestly, after my second year of playing, really going into my career overseas, I was already two years beyond what what is normal in the sense of I had two medical redshirt years in college. So I was actually wow. in college for six years. Um, and even though I only played like eligibility wise for four years, I actually did all six preseasons and all five postseasons. And so Oof. my body had gone through quite a oh. bit. And, and, but I knew I didn't want to regret not playing overseas if I had the opportunity. Um, And on top of that, the opportunity to play in Israel and and to live there for a couple of years. So, um, you know, I did that for a couple of years and I knew my body was at the point where I wanted to be able to play a little basketball, do some hiking, skiing stuff when I'm older. And I didn't want to play to the point where I, you know, couldn't walk anymore. And then with the coaching thing, you know, it's, it's a question I used to get a lot. Um, and I, I just realized that as much as I loved basketball, I it had been my whole life, or at least like the, you know, the focus of the last however many years. And coaching, especially division one basketball is a 24 seven job. Like it's, it, you can't look at it as a job. It is more of a lifestyle. And I just, I was interested in what else was out there and and just interested in a little bit of other things in life. And one of the things I am so grateful for about ending up back at camp is it really has allowed me to kind of get back to the pieces of coaching that I missed. And like, I, I definitely... I don't have any, like, I'm so happy in terms of the decisions I made and don't have regrets about not being in the coaching world, but I do miss the players, right? I miss Mm -hmm. connecting with those young, young student athletes. And one of the best things about my job is that I work with that same age group. Uh, And, you know, I might not be teaching basketball, but I'm certainly in the same way as a coach that you get to impact these student athlete lives. Um, in my role at camp, I really get to work with um, and impact, you know, young college students. So one, one be- like on court thing that I, I wanted to bring up, and this is sort of a, a shout out to my wife, who, <laughs> when we watch basketball, the thing that makes her the craziest in sports is the missed free throw. <laughs> Because like nobody's trying to block your shot. It's you, the ball, it's 15 feet every time. You didn't miss many free throws. Um, I did not. That is correct. <laughs> am I am I embarrassing the hell out of you right I'm now? I'm getting really red. I have to admit, I'm very glad this is a podcast and not like a recorded video session because I think I'm a little red. <laughs> okay. We'll 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 pivot away from that. I just had to <laughs> Again, a little tip of the cap to my it. wife who uh who who eats eats that stuff up. She Hey, you know. I I appreciate that in her. I mean, the thing that got me like from a young age to like care about making free throws was like the concept of they are free, meaning <laughs> there is like I have the most control, right? Like there yeah. is no defense. It is the same every time. Ah, so I I love your wife's uh, uh, view of that. I I think she's right on. Excellent, excellent. So, how much you sort of mentioned it, but 
obviously, you know, when you're on court with your basketball players, you, you got the clipboard, it's the X's and O's. How does that translate to what you're trying to do with the staff at camp, uh, both in sort of like, I guess, preseason, which is we're in now, mm -hmm. versus, mm -hmm. you know, regular season, postseason, which is once the mm -hmm. kids come? Mm-hmm. Um, great question. I think first you, you hit it on, on the head with the concept of, you know, as a, a basketball coach, it's not just about the season and right. in my job here, it's not just about, you know, from June to August, um, there's, it's a full year thing and working with, you know, our staff, there is a lot of communication that needs to be done and, um, you know, a, a lot of the growth that happens is before and after the summer in addition to the summer. And I think one of the other things, you know, you mentioned X's and O's and they're, they're in basketball and they're very much is like the quote X's and O's side to my job, but also, you know, the, the flip side of, you know, the X's and O's coach is, is kind of the, um, I don't know what the perfect word for it is, but kind of the like life coach may not be the right word, but there's the like coach that it's not about the X's and O's. It's about, you know, your character and your intangibles. It's, I, should I, say. I was like, just, yes, I yes. was just going to say it. That's it. Int intangibles was the word I was looking for. And um, I think that's something that for sure has carried over and that I care a lot about in this job now is a lot of the intangibles. And one of the things, you know, I haven't been in this job for that long, but while I have been in it, I think one of the things that I take the most pride in when I talk with our staff, especially in the preseason portion where maybe they're still on the border line of, do I want to come back to camp? Do I not? Or, you know, I have these internship opportunities. I have this, I have that. Um, I think what I really like is, is taking the approach of both, you know, what is best for camp and what is best for, for this person, you know, because if, if I might want them at camp, like 100% in the X's and O's part of my job, but if that's not what's in their best interest, one, it's unlikely that, you know, they will have a great summer or be successful anyway, but two, as a person, I want what's best for them. I want them to succeed in whatever they're doing. And so some of my conversations get to be more about their bigger life picture, you know, and for some, what they're debating between, I get to, I get to give them that same analogy that I used to talk to some of my teammates in college about, which is like, hey, your window of playing college basketball, your window of being a staff member at, at camp, you know, is so small in comparison to the window of, of life and the rest of your life that you have. And so sometimes if it's just about like taking this job or doing something like this, it's like, hey, is that something that's going to be there? Because this won't always be there, right? Yeah. And um, I really appreciate that there's those kinds of parallels from the coaching world to this job, because I, I think in, in the same way, regardless of whether we're talking about playing basketball or being a Herzl camp staff member, um, it's, it's really just having them kind of reflect on what's important to them in this transitional period of time in their life and, and you know, what's best for them. So there, I mean, there's the recruiting aspect then too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, fr from the coaching world too. Y yes. And I, I will be honest, um, that was an easy pro for me on a list of pros and cons. That was an easy pro for leaving the coaching world. Oh, I, oh, I, have, no, I, I have no doubt. I, uh, I, while I love the act of recruiting, the recruiting world is is um I will just leave it at it is something I do I I'm glad to not be a part of right now <laughs> in this I, uh, at this point in time in our world yes, um so yes. yeah so it's actually also kind of awesome especially when it comes to recruiting staff 
um, that I don't have to navigate the AAU world <laughs> of, of basketball and of recruiting. And I, I really do just get to kind of get in touch with, you know, maybe it's former staff that are thinking about not coming back their third year and just, I get to reconnect with people um, from an international standpoint. I get to meet brand new people and see if they're the right fit. Um, and I definitely would say I am much more of the type of recruiter that looks for, you know, the right personality and the right character traits because I can teach skills. Um, you know, I can teach most skills, but it's, it's hard to teach the right, you know, uh, the right personality or the, or the right fit in terms of who they are as a person and what their values are. I mean, it's, again, so much of it comes, I, as a huge sports fan, this is very easy for me to analogize everything back to sports, but you can't build a team. Like you, you can't have a, a team of like 10 LeBron Jameses on your roster. Right. That's not going to work. Like you need to have, mm -hmm. like you need a balanced team you need a balanced staff in the same way 100 percent, and that that is so true and i think if you you know take a look at uh, even if you take a look at our leadership team you know our year-round staff mm -hmm. um th and then and then you can expand it to our our greater staff in both cases we are very much a, a group of diverse people that all bring skills that you know, we have similarities and commonalities without a doubt. And there are very much, you know, there are not 10 LeBron James. Um, and there, and we're all of, of importance, right? Like LeBron, as good as he is, he also can't win by himself. Right. Um, and I, I think whether we're looking at our, a smaller team or a bigger team within Herzl, um, that's one thing that I think um, the, from the top down, we've done a really good job of is surrounding ourselves with people that make us better. You know, and you mentioned the, the year round staff and I think that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm lucky in that, you know, when it, in a, let's pretend we're in a normal world and we're back in offices, mm -hmm. you know, TCG folk offices at the JCC, I'm 150 feet away, maybe from the Herzl mm -hmm. office. So if I have a question, if I have, you know, something, you know, something I need to find out if I'm mm -hmm. trying to kill time and want to say hi to my friends, like <laughs> I can, you know, can pop in there and yeah, it is a very, it is a diverse group, but it, it, everybody fits the role, you know, plays their role. Right. Absolutely. And I think one of the coolest parts, you know, I, I, like I said before, you know, I'm going on maybe, I don't know, a year and a half or so in this job. Um, but one of the coolest things I, I have just been a part of and also watched is is the relationship and team building even between the association side and the foundation side because that's really like you know the the holly and wendy and and the people who are really on top of donors and and the mm -hmm. financial side of things and then there's the programmatic side and those it would be very easy to just kind of work in the separate silos and, and, and also make things very difficult. Um, and it's been so awesome in having our team meetings and, and having people that really kind of work on both sides. And, and it, it's been neat to be a part of a team that has been able to take such different parts of an organization and, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm moving my hands as if you can see them right now, realizing that you can't, but uh, it's, it's really great how, how well we have all meshed together. The number of times that I have to, I, I point out that it's, it, it is an audio medium. Like I give that explainer <laughs> while I'm also talking with my hands or the, 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 the person I'm talking to is showing me something like a piece of art or something. <laughs> yeah, I can see it and it's great, but nobody else can. And yeah. that's, that's, on, that's their loss. Um, so one of the really interesting things that we, we talked about it in, the, in, in Friday's article, but I thought one of the really interesting things that you brought with you from the basketball world was the staff advisory committee. Mm -hmm. um, I was yeah. so lucky to get to talk to the three cha the chairs of the three separate committees this year, but if it, it you know for this is just the way it is, there was a lot that didn't make the article. So I guess in a nutshell, 
explain to folks what the the SAC is and and yeah. how it's being used to improve camp. Absolutely. So wh- what I learned in being a student athlete uh, was there was this organization called SAC which was the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. And it was made up of uh, one or two student athletes from every sport within the college. And it was a group of people who met once a month and talked about you know, any student athlete related issues or challenges. Um, and that committee or that council had a president or had a chair and similar to the way that camp is a part of like a greater organization. So for Herzl, it's the AIJC, um, the university, like at, at UNI, for example, I was a part of the Missouri Valley Conference. So every school in the Missouri Valley Conference had a chair of their SAC. And those people made up the conference SAC. And once a year, there would be this conference where each representative from each school would get together and talk about conference wide, you know, issues or challenges um, or topics related to student athletes. And from there, it actually even continues one more level. Um, so I, I had the privilege of being the chair of the conference SAC, which led to a once a year uh, gathering at, with every chair of every conference in the NCAA in division one. So it's really this building of a network of bringing student athletes together. And so with, with camp, it's like, okay, we should do that. Like first and foremost, staff feedback and staff, staff's views and opinions are so 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 important and not I mean for so many different ways and I could spend a whole nother session with you on just talking about you know the importance of and the value and what we get out of staff feedback Uh, but it, it all came down to okay I want more staff feedback I want them to feel like they have more opportunities to be heard and so you know how can I set this up and because of my experience on SAC as a student athlete, it was like, okay, let's just take that model and move it over to the camp world. And so we basically, I worked with, um, with a, a older staff member who had just finished her, uh, I believe third year on staff, Ellie Simon. Um, Mm -hmm. and the two of us really created uh, a structure where our staff, our incoming staff could, apply to be on SAC and throughout the application process you you talk about things in camp that you want to see improved or or places where you feel like the staff voice isn't heard enough um, and and you 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 answer a lot of questions related to like improving camp and making camp better and you get and you get selected into the committee uh, or into the council and within the council based on the year, you know, we have different committees and those committees are created based on what they wrote in their applications, you know? So it's, it's not for me to bring all these staff in and say, and tell them what we're going to talk about. It's like, Hey, what is important to you? And, and, and how do we want to bring your voice uh, and bridge that gap, you know, between staff and, and the leadership and year round team. And uh, so we gave it a try it, let's see, in 2020. And um, we had a group of about 20 people on three different committees. And each committee, as you mentioned, has a chair. Uh, and it was it was awesome. We met once a month in our council, as a whole council. And we met once a month as a like each committee also met once a month. Mm. Um, and it was it was just a really neat way uh, to get it start a structure, a system started for consistent feedback. And the other piece that we haven't seen yet because we didn't have camp last summer, but the other intention of this is for all of staff to feel comfortable going to their representative. So like 
like as a as the women's basketball representative, all of my teammates could have me pass along information at the monthly meetings. So I want it to be the same way this summer, right? When staff are thinking and feeling different things, you know, we aren't always accessible all the time, but if they if they constantly have staff and peers around them that they feel comfortable talking about challenges or issues or things on their mind, and then we give those staff members that they're talking to a platform every month uh, or during the summer every week to bring that to our attention, it's great. And so my dream is to like open up the Jewish camping world to this like <laughs> this like world of sack where in the AIJC like every every uh, camp will have their own sack and then the AIJC can have like the chair from each one meet and then the FJC you know could have all the different you know the reform movement and the Ramah movement the AIJC and all these different movements each have their chair and come together in this big cool way of like empowering the staff voice. And that's awesome. And I I did want to I I, I mentioned how great they were, but I got I need to name them. Yes, uh, Demi Fine, Max Walker, and Naomi Kaplan, the three committee chairs this year, they were so unbelievably engaging, um, and so interesting, and they're like so motivated. Mm to 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 use their this opportunity to make make the camp experience better it's great it 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 is so great and and those three demi max and naomi and 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 truly i could go down the line of of every single person on that council but they they are incredible and it's it i'm so glad you had the opportunity to connect with them and and hear from them um because they they are so special in so many ways no, I, I couldn't agree more. They were fantastic. Now, you, you mentioned that the, the committee, you, you, you came to camp in 2019. The committee started in 2020. So you, you've been employed with camp since 2019 and haven't had a summary yet. <laughs> I know it's kind of it's kind of odd. It's a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. Um, yeah, I I was I was there for the second half of well, yeah, my job really in this role started at the end of 2019. Um, so I, in some ways, I'm like, okay, well, I hope this all works because I really don't <laughs> know yet. Um, but but yeah, I'm you know, we all, we all went through what we went through in 2020 and in whatever ways that looked. And, uh, there were silver linings. It gave me the opportunity to get to know staff members, whether, even though it was on zoom, um, and also I'll do a lot of, of, um, professional development. I think, you know, that's something that Drea has just been so supportive of from the start is like when, when things come in my email and it's, you know, I, I, was able to take a couple different classes on staff training and leadership development and things like that. Um, so it really has been neat to, to kind of go through that and I'm really ready to like put it to practice. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say it's a lot of, I mean, back to the sports, a lot of preseason and now, uh, it's, time. Yeah. <laughs> now it's time. It is time. All right. Well, Jackie, last two questions and we will let you get out of here. Uh, what is your favorite Jewish holiday? Ooh, favorite Jewish holiday. Hmm. Hmm. The the first one that came to mind happened to be Rosh Hashanah. (laughs) I don't know if that's because I love apples and honey or if it's because I love the concept of, of the Jewish New Year. Um. But for whatever reason, that popped into my mind. No, that's those are both as good of reasons as any. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite Jewish food? Mm, I think I'm gonna have to go with matzo ball soup. It would have really been good if I answered Passover because you know they go hand in hand. But yes. I I love a good a good matzo ball soup. <laughs> Well, that you can't go wrong with that. And yeah. frankly, matzo ball soup works really almost any any time. Oh yeah, and year round for sure. Abs- I mean, absolutely. One of my favorite restaurants growing up in Sioux City, Iowa, uh, it is no longer in a restaurant, um, but they had matzo ball soup on their menu, and it was just 
the best. Um, oh, that's awesome. So yeah, side note, but. Well, Jackie, Kaylin, thank you so, so much for your time. I'm so excited that you get to put all of your development and coaching and everything skills uh, to, to work at camp this summer with kids in, in actual, <laughs> you know, pro- game situations, if you will. Uh, but thank you again for your time and your hard work. And uh, we appreciate having you. Oh, for sure. And thanks, Lonnie. And if I may just take a quick 30 seconds more, I'm sure I can speak on behalf of, of our entire team and everyone who you've talked to. Thank you for, for, oh. for doing this work. Truly. I mean, it's, it's, you'd be surprised by how many times somebody has said, well, what do you do during the year? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What do I, I, I work for camp. And they're like, well, yeah, but isn't that only in the summer? And I'm like, okay. Okay. Um, but you know, to have somebody like you who knows there's so much work that goes into it and who really has taken the time to talk to all of us, to put it all into words and share it with the community is really, really special. And just on behalf of all of us, thank you so much. Oh, you, you are very sweet and very kind. And I, you know, look, I was really, um, I, I was thrilled to be able to do it. And I was honestly, I, I couldn't believe that Drea and, and Gary said yes, uh, <laughs> but, um, and listen, I got Gary on the record for things, which I know that's, that's amazing. Pro- probably not his favorite thing to do. Um, <sighs> uh, some of my most fun conversations with him are off the record. So this was, uh, but this was, um, no, it was, it was a great opportunity. And I, I hope that people, and I think as a parent, I, I recognize that, this year is going to be different. And mm-hmm. we've spent a lot of time you know, sort of drilling it into our camper that this summer is going to be different and mm-hmm. here's how it's going to be different. And these are the things we learn. And this is, you know, we're, we're prepping her on a regular basis of, of mm-hmm. what it's going to look like. And so, you know, it, it, I think it's helpful and it's helpful to, to be able to give people as many answers to, you know, I, I don't, mm-hmm presume I would answer everybody's question. I'm not sure I answered all of mine, but <laughs> I, I got as, I mean, I, I got answers to everything I asked. I don't know if I asked all the right questions. Yeah. I, I, I is probably the better way to put it, but you know, it, it'll, um, I, I hope it helps people and helps put them, their mind at ease. And, you know, thanks to you and Tria and Gary and all of the staff and people associated with camp that I got to talk to who were really so, so generous with their time and, left me with a lot of work to do to go through all the really good material. So <laughs> awesome. thank you. I appreciate awesome. that. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Lonnie. The Who the Folk podcast is part of the Jew Folk Podcast Network, a product of Jew Folk Inc. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show wherever you get your podcasts. If you have suggestions for other podcast guests, please email them to me at editor at tcjewfolk.com. For our other shows, check out tcjufolk.com slash podcast. Mm-hmm.